Hi, this is my final procrastination attempt before I actually have to go work. I want to. <laughs> I hate work. Uh, I should not be in control of my own schedule. Um, hmm. I've been asked about what it's, or I've seen people suggest that it's not, like not really that great of an idea to do this job whenever like a body a job that focuses on your body and to also have problems that focus on your body but um I don't really care like I don't like I do and I don't want it like if I look at myself or I'm looking at myself right now I don't like it like there are plenty of things that I don't like like it's more but also I think that I think that I do have BDD, but I mean, my, like, I understand that guys, like, want to fuck me, like, I get that, like, I go out, like, I've been a bartender, you know, and I've, I've been doing this, I, like, I get that, but I feel like it's a lot less, for me anyway, uh, and I, I don't think that this is, like, an all-encompassing thing all over the eating disorder spectrum or whatever because like a lot of people require validation and a lot of people like I understand that a lot of anorexics can also uh, get addicted to plastic surgery and stuff but I've always felt uh, or whenever I see plastic surgery addicts that don't have eating disorders like I've always felt like they're sadder and uh, more like pathetic and fragile or whatever than I am <laughs> sorry I know like whatever you want to do to your body if that's fine I, I, I just I don't know, I, something about that I find more disturbing than what I do, um, because uh, that's just person. that's like, I'm not speaking on behalf of people with eating disorders here, because like, I think I have a little bit more of a dissonance with like, wanting the validation for being hot, but I mean, for me, it's like, I want to look as ugly <laughs> as I see myself in my head, I want to be like 80 pounds, and to look like a fucking monster, like, I'm... Being hot's never done fucking anything for me. I don't, I don't like it. Like, if you, you think that I'm not hot, thank you. <laughs> if you want to play me and call me ugly, like, finally. Um, hey, well, we can, we got some common ground there. And, um, I, it's, it's not so much that I'm, like, sitting around thinking I'm this hideous blob or whatever all day. It's more like I have no fucking idea what I look like. Whenever I was fat, I didn't have any fucking idea what I looked like. Because whenever I got fat, like, I, I always looked fat in my head. So, like, whenever uh, I was, like, uh, like, I started out from, like, 100 pounds and I got up to 253 after my first husband got deported. And I think that's whenever I, like, gave up on life for the first time. <laughs> and, um, yeah, uh, I don't know. I just, I don't like it whenever we talk about beauty magazines. I don't like whenever people say that we're trying to look like celebrities. I think, I've said this before, but I want to drive home this point. That whenever somebody says that I'm trying, I, I do get mesmerized by, like, pictures of super thin people. Yeah, like, yeah, I compare myself to them and stuff. So, yeah, that's there. But, um, to say... That ignited this problem is offensive and it completely trivializes and lessens everything that I have experienced with this because that's like one tiny itsy bitsy little bitty blip of what my problem is like it's not even really my problem it's just like the like I, I'm as I'm a human and I'm as subjectable to that stuff as everybody else in the entire world you know so to go and say that that's why I'm like this that you know, it's not about images <laughs> it's not about magazines it's not about Eugenia Cooney in Eugenia Cooney I think that she is like honestly like the least glamorized the least like because like, I, I tried to say in my last video, and I don't think that, like, people hear me talk about recoverers, and they're like, oh, you're an eating disorder person, so you just hate recovery. You hate blah, 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 <laughs> No. Like, dude, that's not what I'm trying, you're, 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 you're missing my point. My point is, they're not recovered. <laughs> my point is that those are people that are full of shit and triggering everybody, and then, like, saying that they're better than me because they're hypocrites. Like, that's, 
that's why I don't like Ro Mitchell. That's why I don't like Elzani because like their entire channels are complete menageries over how fucking sick they got. Like they're just like Shanny. They're just like really, um Whenever people see somebody talk about how sick they got with their eating disorder, like, I was kind of, like, scared to talk about the blind thing, because then, like, a lot of people are going to be like, oh, I don't have an eating disorder because I didn't go blind, you know? Because, like, anything could happen, like, a billion and one different things could happen for anything that you do in your life, and, um, but whenever it comes to eating disorders, it's, like, this constant competitive aspect, and, uh, yeah, that'll feed into, like, the glossy magazines or whatever, but, I mean, it's not, that doesn't, uh, nobody looks at that picture and goes, I'm gonna fucking starve myself. Like, there's so much stuff that happens before anybody gets to that point. Um. And it sucks to be mentally ill. Um. Because, no, like, everybody thinks you're faking it. Like, you, you're gonna get, if you have a mental illness, like, at one point or another in your life, everybody's gonna be like, you don't really have a diagnosis. You don't really have, whatever, you're just trying to, okay, yeah, like, I completely ostracized myself from society. I totally <laughs> have just, I've done all of this, um, to go and face people like you scrutinizing me, like, all the time. And, and I'm not even talking about people who just know about my eating disorder and stuff. Like, whenever people find out that I tried to kill myself, like, everybody just yells at me. Everybody. <laughs> like, everybody treats you like shit. For, like, everybody hates people with mental illness. Everybody believes that it's all made up. Everybody thinks that nobody's really experiencing anything that they can't physically see. And, uh, they're always going to use, like, six TikTok fakers or whatever to totally be like, yeah, you're not, there's no such thing as mentally ill. You're just, like, this, that, or the other thing. Like, you're not a doctor. You can't diagnose yourself. I'm a doctor. <laughs> like, no, I know better than a doctor. Not you. Not, uh, any of the doctors that you've ever seen or blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, people, oh, people suck. And people think that you have to earn like, if, if you are believed, and you have better earned your mental illness. Like, you have better, <laughs> you better deserve it. You better, like, you have to have been a war, whatever, or you have to have been raped. Like, that's, we are so obsessed with rape as a society. We are so, like, all over the gamut of it. We are so obsessed with the victims. We are so obsessed with perpetrators. We are so obsessed with the act of it. We are to the point that, like, mental illness cannot be portrayed on a screen unless you also talk about rape. It's weird. Is that not... Can we not all collectively say that's fucking weird? And I think that uh, it all started with, like, A&E and stuff. I think that started with intervention. I don't, I don't know. I kind of think that we've always been pretty weird about that. But I think that it got really bad with, like, A&E type shows like Intervention. I think that the producers specifically only accept stories about rape. Because, like, whenever you watch Intervention, you're like, is it like, okay, like, it'll make you think. Like, I remember whenever I watched that when I was 17, I was like, oh, everybody's an addict because they got raped. <laughs> and then, and that's not the case. Um, I think they have, like, two stories where there wasn't, like, a big rape crisis or something, and I think that they only do that because it's like, okay, well, everybody else is a useless fucking junkie, and you're only forgivable, and you're only a hum still a human being if you have had this much trauma, <laughs> because, like, nobody wants to go and say that somebody wasn't raped. Nobody wants to, uh you know, deny that kind of story, but I mean, like, it's still, it's, like, look at YouTube, look at true crime channels, look at, like, every time something comes up, it's, like, all anybody ever wants to talk about, and I mean, I, and on one hand, like, rape itself is kind of common, like, it, I mean, it should be talked about, and it, it is common, but the way we handle it is just weird, it's, like, we don't know what we're doing, we don't know what we're talking about, we, like, there's just, I don't know what I'm talking about right now. I mean, just like with this whole every five minutes, there's another fucking Instagram person. Every five minutes, there's another fucking YouTuber that's like fucking creeping on kids. That's fucking 
raping people. That's fucking Mel Mel Melanie Martinez. Fucking, they, they, like, what the fuck? Like, they, why? Like, every, it's, it's everywhere you look. And I, I mean, it makes sense for celebrities to commonly be, it just does. Like, I mean, celebrities are narcissists. You know, uh, like you have to be a very charismatic person. Hey, you have to be very charismatic and you have to have like a level of like charisma and bravado that is usually possessed by sociopaths and narcissists. And um, I think that it's so common for uh, like presidents and CEOs and like high profile actors, you know, they're uh it's very common for sociopaths and stuff to have positions like that because i mean like a, a sociopath uh, there are probably tons of actor sociopaths because i mean like what is a sociopath they are totally putting on a mask and they are acting emotions you know so of course they're good at being actors and also um they get more money than god uh, and sociopaths so we already have like a whole stage set up for somebody that's like not only it, uh, does it is it very suitable for their mental illness because it would make them a very good actor not that all actors are just that it's i can see why that's very why that's the case and not only that but i mean they are granted uh lifestyles and money and stuff that sociopaths would frankly be attracted to you know like they they get more money than god they get all of these fans that will do whatever. They can, like, commit crimes for probably decades before anybody finally calls them out because, like, that guy's the actor and then I'm, like, but fuck nowhere. And, um, you know, like, all these people are very easy targets towards people like that because who would believe them? Like, they're just going to look like a liar until you have, like, 80 people backing them up. So, I mean, like, that's why. And, and you know, they have, like, all of these things, more money than God. They have more access and fans and like they can get away with fucking everything so you have like that and then also sociopaths get bored very 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 easily like seriously sit there and think for a minute what it's like to not experience any emotions like seriously think about what it would feel like to never feel anything for anyone or anything and you're just fucking bored all the time and you have zero tolerance for boredom so you go and you do all the things your money and stuff can afford you, but you're attracted to taboo. And you're attracted to taboo and the novelty and stuff. So if you, what did it, they fucking go make Jet Epstein Island. You know, that's just, that's how it happens. That's why, like, the sociopaths, um, they're not always evil. But, like, they're going to burn our world down, and they're going to build it back up, too. You know, they're going to be, uh, some of them are surgeons. Some of them are, you know, it's just, it depends on what they want in life. Um, some of them, like Andy Warhol, he never really hurt anybody because he got all the validation that he needed, you know, from his art and whatever. And I just don't think that he was on the level where he required, like, I, I don't know why people actually have to hurt somebody so I, that's like a whole other thing, but then you never will it really will know either because like they're all fucking liars. <laughs> like they're you you cannot sit there and give and make a statistic for like how many of these guys were abused. They're all gonna say they were abused. Like a sociopath is always gonna say I was abused and I was raped and this is why. Like that can't be why that happens. That it can't be trauma. It can't be trauma that makes you do that. It just it can't be because like. So many people get traumatized and they know they don't hurt anybody. So it's something else. I mean, like, I don't doubt that a lot of them had, had fucked up lives, but that's just because most people have fucked up lives. I've never met somebody who didn't have a fucked up life or trauma. And uh, if they say they don't, they're lying to themselves. Like, it's more, it's uncommon to not have any kind of trauma. It's like, you, you're not going to get out of life without being hurt, dude. Um... Yeah, okay, though that's all I have to say about that right now. But uh I guess I gotta go work by.